check. Now, when is the time to instruct? When is the time to counsel? And why is it important to counsel? When a person just asks for advice, we can teach. When people are in pain, when people are not willing to change. For instance, I use an illustration. A couple who are fighting, and they come to the pastor, and the pastor says, says forgive each other, love each other, go home and say nice things to each other. Will the couple listen to him? Yes. No, because they are not ready. So when people are not ready, we just tell them to do, it's not going to work. But with counseling, what do I do? First listen to both the man and the woman. Both the man and the woman are suffering in any painful relationship. The woman feels the man doesn't listen to, him, to her, and the man say the woman talk too much and give me too much pressure. And when I listen to each one of them, I will say, yes, it will be difficult for you. But I won't accuse the other person. Mm -hmm. I will just say, it is difficult for you. It's not easy for you. And then when I finish listening, and then I will, I will analyze, guide them to analyze the situation. So what you see is that the marriage now is painful for both of you, right? It's painful, it's not, not easy for you. First, I respond to the feeling. It's not easy, it's painful, it's unhappy. And then I'll say, now I realize, do you think that the marriage now has come to a difficult point? And then they say, yes. Then I ask the question, do you want to find a way out? Do you want to build up the marriage? And then they say, yes. But then they may say, well, it's too hard, too hard, too hard. And then I'm guiding them to arrive at a conclusion. First, does the marriage have a problem? Second, do you want to work on it? Is it workable? And then the one person might say, it's too hard, too hard. And then I'll say, yeah, no, it's very hard. It's very difficult. And then I can assure the person, I have seen many difficult marriages. And with counseling, and if they are willing to change a little bit every day, it can improve. So are you willing? And then they're willing, then I will ask them to guide them. What are some possible ways to solve the problem? So when people are not willing, to change, or they think it's too hard to change, then I have to counsel them so that they become willing. And then, and then situation is, when they are deeply hurt, someone come into you and say, oh, my husband left me, I'm crying, I'm sad, I cannot sleep, all this. Many people might say, oh, go and pray. Pray for your husband. Fast for your husband, that he will come back. The wife, the wife will feel, I'm in this big difficulties, and you're just telling me to fast. So every problem, fast and pray. But then instead we'll say, I know it must be very difficult for you that the husband has left. Now, also another bad counseling is like this. What did you do to your husband? Did you yell at your husband? That's guilt, giving guilt. That's very bad. But if I say, yes, I know it's very difficult for you. I, I, you know, when I hear that, I can sense your pain. I know that it's not easy for you. At this point, you feel hopeless. You, you feel like there's no way out. Your husband has left you. What can be done? That must be very difficult for you. For I say out the feeling. How would the woman feel? The woman feels someone understands me. That she feels support. The support is very important. Then he has strength. She has strength to move on. So that's the importance of counseling. In those situations when people are very sad, when they're not willing to change, those are, not, those are instances that we don't teach. But we listen and respond to the feelings. And then next step, we, we find out more about the situation, about the hidden feelings. And then next step, we guide them to understand the difficulties and then guide them to find solutions. And then find possible ways how, what you can do. So do you understand now the diff importance of counseling? Yes. Now it's not only used in formal counseling. When you have a fight with your husband or wife, you can use this skill also. You can listen and then say, oh, I'm sorry, I have, must have made you very unhappy. I know it's, uh, you, know, you have to bear with me and, and, and I know I hurt your heart, you know. So we can respond to people around us like that.
So I hope you see this and be motivated to learn. Let me tell you, when I teach counseling, I notice this. Some people are very interested. Some people in the back, uh, uh, such long talk. Uh, the two of them talk so much. Oh, I have no patience to listen to people. I want to say that. If you have no patience to listen to people, you cannot counsel. You want to teach too fast, you cannot counsel. You, we have to have a feeling, like Jesus. When he saw the crowd, he had what? Compassion. He had compassion on the people. And he responded to people's feeling. He responded to the woman's feeling. Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Take heart. Responding to her feeling of fear and rejected. The woman who has 12 years bleeding. He knew that when he asked who touched me, he ref she refused to answer because she was afraid. She feel rejected by the people because it was against the law. So Jesus first comforted her and said, take heart. I care about your feeling. Relax. Don't worry. And then he comes to daughter. That is a close relationship. So this counseling skill, I tell you, is very, very hard to learn especially for pastors because pastors are used to teaching okay so tomorrow we'll continue and now you can continue with your homework any any question any question okay if you don't have a question have you finished your assignments if you finish your assignment you don't have it right so work on it now work on it now to finish it and if you're not sure if you that one pass or not come out and ask me i'll be sitting here you come and ask me and I'll tell you what is wrong and what can be done, okay?